On the robotic arm, EV2 is flown over to access two sets of bolts on the boom end of the upper IROSA. The first two bolts will allow the boom deployment system rollers to be moved into place to help with the array deployment later in the spacewalk. The second two bolts will release two of four mechanisms that hold the IROSA in its rolled up configuration. EV-1 partially releases the upper IROSA's restraint bolt and installs the first of two handling aids called scoops and prep for removing IROSA from the carrier. The arm flies EV-2 over to the hinge end of the upper IROSA and both crew members work to release the final bolt holding it to the carrier. EV-1 installs a second scoop and EV-2 lifts the IROSA off of the carrier. After several maneuvers on the robotic arm, EV-2 will arrive at the 1A mod kit worksite. During these maneuvers, EV-1 will pick up the temporarily stowed bag from the port cart and reconfigure both crew's safety tethers on his way to meet EV-2 at the mod kit. Both crew will then work to install IROSA onto the 1A mounting bracket. The crew will release the scoops and EV-2 will move into position to release the final bolt holding IROSA in its folded position. Once released, EV-1 will hold IROSA closed while EV-2 egresses his foot restraint and gets into position. Both crew will then work together to unfold IROSA and secure the right side onto the mounting. Once secured, EV-2 will drive two hinge bolts that hold IROSA in the unfolded position. EV-2 will then move away from IROSA to reconfigure a safety tether on the arm. EV-1 works to drive eight bolts to fully secure the IROSA to the mounting bracket. Both crew will then work to electrically connect the new IROSA to the ISS power system. They'll first attach four connectors to IROSA, then both will move to either side of the legacy array to disconnect the old array and connect a Y cable. This will allow power to flow from both the new IROSA and the legacy array to the space station power system. At this point, EV-1 moves into a deployment viewing position and EV-2 will release the final two bolts restraining IROSA in the undeployed position. IROSA will deploy over the next six to 10 minutes. During deployment, EV-1 translates back to the IROSA carrier to reconfigure the carrier beams that previously held the upper IROSA. These beams need to be rotated out of the way to allow access to the lower IROSA on the second EVA. Once deployment is complete, EV-2 will release two bolts that allow the IROSA blankets to become tensioned. EV-2 then cleans up the mod kit worksite retrieving his crew lock bag and heads to the carrier to help EV-1 with the carrier beams. The crew members will work together to release the bolts holding the beams in place. Then they will rotate the beams out of the way and secure them back down. This is the last task in the first DVA. Both crew will clean up the worksite and translate back to the airlock. They will clean up their tethers on the way. They will then work to ingress and begin repressing the airlock. This will finish the first of two EVAs. And that was an overview of what we can expect during today's spacewalk. On your screen here on the top right, you see NASA astronaut Frank Rubio continuing to step through procedures to get the crew ready to head out of the airlock later this morning. And towards the lower left of your screen, you see United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al-Nayadi. 
He's working alongside Rubio to who will prepare to get the simplified aid for EVA rescue or safer installed. Once the safers are installed on both Hoburg and Bowen, the crew will move through the airlock and start depressurization pr procedures. <laughs> Copy, Frank, 0009. Getting a good view inside the backside of the extravehicular mobility unit or EMU. Those are the spacesuits that the crew will be wearing during today's spacewalk. They're essentially a mini life support system and provide all of the environment protection, mobility, and communications for the crew members during spacewalks. And as Rubio and Alneati continue to step through those procedures ahead of getting the crew ready to begin depressurization, we do have some statistics to go through today for our spacewalk. Today's spacewalk will be the ninth spacewalk for NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. He has a total spacewalking time of 54 hours and 19 minutes. And for NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, this will be his very first spacewalk. 
Today's spacewalk will be the 264th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades, and will be the seventh space station spacewalk this year. And this will be the fifth spacewalk for Expedition 69. The station on one for step eleven time one two one four. And we copy Frank. And if you're just joining us this morning, we have two spacewalkers preparing to exit the International Space Station's Quest airlock to install a new ISS rollout solar array. Those spacewalkers are NASA astronaut Steve Bowen, who you see in the center of your screen there. And copy, Frank. Good numbers. And our other spacewalker today is NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, who will be completing his very first spacewalk. Also in the equipment airlock is NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, as well as United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi. They're continuing to step through procedures with the crew ahead of getting them in lock for the depressurization sequence. Back in the International Space Station Flight Control, Orbit 2 team is ready to support today's spacewalk under the direction of Flight Director Diane Daly. Station on 1 for step 21, time 1218. And copy, Frank.
In addition to Flight Director Diane Daly, the rest of the Orbit 2 team is supporting here from Mission Control Houston as well. To her right as the cap her right at the Capcom console is the ground IV, and that is Canadian Space Agency astronaut Jenny Gibbons. She'll serve as the spacewalk communicator who will talk directly with the crew during the spacewalk, helping them choreograph timelines and procedures. And to her right is NASA astronaut Nick Haig, who is the Capcom. You'll hear him communicating with the crew up until the point of depressurization this morning, at which point the ground IV will take over communicating communicating with our spacewalking duo. Everything continuing to go smoothly this morning. The next major milestone that we can look ahead to is the installation of the Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue, or SAFERS, essentially the, the space jetpack. This is installed as a precautionary measure in the very unlikely event that a crew member were to become untethered from the International Space Station. This jetpack would allow them to get back to the space station. Following safer installation, we can look ahead to depressurization. First, the crew will move to the crew lock section of the Quest airlock, and depressurization will occur in a two-stage fashion. First, the crew lock will be taken down to five pounds per square inch of pressure. At this point, they'll pause depressurization to do a systems check, and then... Transition Houston on one. And we are seeing Alneadi and Rubio work together to install the safer. Hey, Frank. I've got one go back for you. Uh, step eight, uh, we owe you a go. Uh, your go to turn off the HECA. It's uh, just, if you want to turn off HECAs on both EVs, that'd be great. Thanks so much. Again, Alneadi and Rubio now working together to install the safer, simplified aid for EVA rescue on NASA astronaut Steve Bowen's spacesuit.
and Rubio and Alneadi working to get that safer installed on NASA astronaut Steve Bowen's spacesuit. For today's spacewalk, Bowen is designated EV-1, and he'll be wearing the spacesuit with the red stripes, which you can see on your screen there. Woody Hoberg will be designated EV-2 and will be wearing an unmarked spacesuit. Once both SAFERS are installed, the next milestone that we can look ahead to is depressurization and ultimately when the crew will then exit the International Space Station's Quest airlock. They'll then work together to install an upgraded International Space Station rollout solar array on the 1A power channel on the starboard truss of the International Space Station. The IROSAs were delivered on a SpaceX Dragon cargo resupply craft on Monday to the space station. Rubio and Alneadi continuing to get the safer, simplified aid for EVA rescue installed on NASA astronaut Steve Bowen's spacesuit. Following installation of the safer, Bowen will be moved to the crew airlock for depress.
and Bowen now being moved into the crew airlock. Next up, Rubio and Alneati will work together to get Hoberg's safer installed. And Rubio and Alneati now going to work together to get the safer installed on Hoberg's spacesuit. Again, he'll be designated EV2 and he's wearing the spacesuit with the unmarked spacesuit this morning. As Rubio and Alneati continue to step through those procedures to get the safer installed, we can take a quick look ahead at what's to come. Following getting the safer installed, both crew will be moved into the airlock to begin the depressurization process. The, de the depressurization of the airlock is done in a two-stage process. First, the crew lock will be taken down to five pounds per square inch of pressure. At this point, depressurization will be paused to do a systems check. Following this, depressurization will resume and continue all the way down to vacuum. Now, once vacuum is reached, the two spacewalkers walk, space will complete suit and communication checks before placing their spacesuit on internal battery power, which will officially mark the start of today's spacewalk. A U.S. spacewalk start and end time is measured from the time the crew places their space suit on internal battery power all the way up until the time repressurization occurs and they're back inside the crew lock following completion of their spacewalk. We are expecting today's spacewalk to last about seven hours.
And here in Mission Control Houston, NASA Flight Director Diane Daly did just pull the team of flight controllers on console, and everything is looking good. We are go for today's spacewalk. Rubio now going to work to get Bowen moved into the crew airlock. Hoberg, rather. Uh, Bowen currently is in the uh, crew airlock already. Both Bowen and Hoberg now in the crew airlock. Once they get situated and everything looks good, we will see the hatch close and the depressurization process begin.
Kent Station, Houston, uh, when able, on one. Check with you on one. Hey Frank, uh, just uh, we're trying to get in front of an LOS uh, with some ground commanding. There's a couple steps that you're going to confirm later on. We'd like to do early. That's step 76 and 77. And that was the voice of. 76 and 77 are in good config. Emer MPEV is closed and uh, Node 1 BAP is connected to the gamma cat. Copy, Frank. Thanks for doing this. And that was the voice of today's CAPCOM um, and NASA astronaut Nick Haig calling up to Rubio, letting him know that there is a loss of signal coming up, giving them the go to step through a couple of procedures during that LOS. And station Houston on one. No action for you. You can acknowledge with the thumbs up. We're going to command so you go hot mic for the EV crew. And station Houston, uh, we're with you on one. Uh, if you try to transmit last, I want to let you know the crew is going to go hot mic here shortly. And also, you've got to go in step 84. Okay, that copy uh, crew will be hot mic and go on step 84. And they just be advised you're coming in a little bit weak. You're readable. Copy all. Thanks so much. 
And we did just hear that confirmation from the ground that the crew is go to continue depressurization. First up, they'll close the hatch, which Alneati and Rubio are working together to do, as you can see on your screen. And you did see that hatch just get closed. We are in an expected handover between ground stations. So we are not going to expect to have video of the crew on board the International Space Station for the next 11 and a half minutes. However, we do know that they're going to continue the depressurization process as they have the go from the ground to do so. And if you're just joining us this morning, we have two spacewalkers who are suited up and in the process of working through depressurization procedures. Today they will exit the station's Quest airlock to install an upgraded IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array on the 1A power channel on the starboard truss of the International Space Station. We do have an animation to walk us through what we can expect our spacewalkers to complete today. So let's take a quick look. This video is for the ISS Rollout Solar Array, or IROSA, 1A install EVA. Steve Bowen, EV1 with the red stripes, egresses and retrieves. EV2 with white stripes, Woody Hoberg, egresses with the Krulak bag on his body restraint tether and closes the thermal cover. EV1 translates up the forward face of the truss and goes starboard. He stops to configure safety tethers. EV2 follows a similar translation path and goes to the port crew equipment translation aid cart to temporarily stow his bag and retrieve an articulating portable foot restraint. Meanwhile, EV1 translates to the IROSA carrier, stows his bag, and retrieves his pistol grip tool. EV1 begins preparing IROSA for removal from the carrier, first releasing a restraint bolt on the upper IROSA. EV2 relocates the foot restraint and installs it on the space station's robotic arm. EV2 ingresses the foot restraint, and then the arm will move him away from the truss. EV1 translates to the lower IROSA and releases its first restraint bolt. He releases both anti-rotation devices back on the upper IROSA, and then will stow them in the crew lock bag. On the robotic arm, EV2 is flown over to access two sets of bolts on the boom end of the upper IROSA. The first two bolts will allow the boom deployment system rollers to be moved into place to help with the array deployment later in the spacewalk. The second two bolts will release two of four mechanisms that hold the IROSA in its rolled up configuration. EV-1 partially releases the upper IROSA's restraint bolt and installs the first of two handling aids called scoops and prep for removing IROSA from the carrier. The arm flies EV-2 over to the hinge end of the upper IROSA and both crew members work to release the final bolt holding it to the carrier. 
EV1 installs a second scoop, and EV2 lifts the iRosa off of the carrier. After several maneuvers on the robotic arm, EV2 will arrive at the 1A Modkit worksite. During these maneuvers, EV1 will pick up the temporarily stowed bag from the port cart and reconfigure both crew's safety tethers on his way to meet EV2 at the mod kit. Both crew will then work to install Irosa onto the 1A mounting bracket. The crew will release the scoops, and EV2 will move into position to release the final bolt holding Irosa in its folded position. Once released, EV1 will hold Irosa closed while EV2 egresses his foot restraint and gets into position. Both crew will then work together to unfold Irosa and secure the right side onto the mounting bracket. Once secured, EV2 will drive two hinge bolts that hold Irosa in the unfolded position. EV2 will then move away from Irosa to reconfigure a safety tether on the arm. EV1 works to drive eight bolts to fully secure the Irosa to the mounting bracket. Both crew will then work to electrically connect the new Irosa to the ISS power system. They'll first attach four connectors to Irosa, then both will move to either side of the legacy array to disconnect the old array and connect a Y cable. This will allow power to flow from both the new Irosa and the legacy array to the space station power system. At this point, EV1 moves into a deployment viewing position and EV2 will release the final two bolts restraining Irosa in the undeployed position. Irosa will deploy over the next six to 10 minutes. During deployment, EV-1 translates back to the Irosa carrier to reconfigure the carrier beams that previously held the upper Irosa. These beams need to be rotated out of the way to allow access to the lower Irosa on the second EVA. Once deployment is complete, EV-2 will release two bolts that allow the Irosa blankets to become tensioned. EV-2 then cleans up the mod kit worksite retrieving his crew lock bag, and heads to the carrier to help EV-1 with the carrier beams. The crew members will work together to release the bolts holding the beams in place. Then they will rotate the beams out of the way and secure them back down. This is the last task in the first DVA. Both crew will clean up the worksite and translate back to the airlock. They will clean up their tethers on the way. They will then work to ingress and begin repressing the airlock. This will finish the first of two EVAs. And that is a high level, level overview of what we can expect from today's spacewalk. If you're just joining us, two NASA astronauts are currently suited up and in the crew airlock and are working their way through depressurization procedures. Today's spacewalk, spacewalkers are NASA astronaut Steve Bowen, and today will be his ninth spacewalk, as well as NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, who will be completing his first spacewalk. Bowen and Hoberg will venture outside for a spacewalk expected to last about seven hours today, the focus of which will be on the starboard truss of the International Space Station to install and monitor the deployment of one of the IROSAs, or ISS Rollout Solar Array, both of which were delivered on a SpaceX Cargo Dragon resupply vehicle on Monday to the space station.
And today's spacewalk is the 264th in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. This is the seventh spacewalk in 2023 and the fifth spacewalk for Expedition 69. As we mentioned, it's the ninth space work, spacewalk for Bowen, who has a cumulative spacewalking time of over 54 hours across eight previous spacewalks. The IROSA that the crew will install today is 60 feet long and 20 feet wide. It shades a little more than half of the original or legacy arrays, which are 112 feet long by 39 feet wide. Each new IROSA produces more than 20 kilowatts of electricity, and once all the IROSAs are installed, it will enable a 30% increase in power production over the International Space Station's current arrays. And we are in a loss of signal period as we have a handover between satellites. However, we are expecting communications and video to be back here in less than a minute. During this loss of signal period, the crew has been stepping through procedures in order to work through depressurization of the airlock. This is done in a two-stage process. First, the crew lock goes down to five pounds per square inch of pressure, at which point that depressurization will be paused to do a systems check. And then following this, depressur depressurization will resume to bring it all the way down to the vac vacuum. Now, once that vacuum is reached, the two spacewalkers will complete some additional suit and comm checks before placing their spacesuit on internal battery power, officially marking the start of today's spacewalk. And pressure inside of the crew lock is about 7.27 pounds per square inch. Again, we'll pause once that pressure reaches 5 pounds per square inch. Station Houston on one, we're back with you, voice only. Nick, uh, we have you live there, copy, voice only, thanks. And Stephen, what do you, you guys thought you have about 100 millimeters of mercury to go? You want coffee? Yes, Frank, I copy. I see airlock P6.5. Yes, I agree.
pressure inside the crew lock now at 6.35 pounds per square inch of pressure. Now less than six pounds per square inch of pressure inside the crew lock. Again, once we do reach five pounds per square inch, that depressurization will be paused to do a systems check. Everything's still looking good for depressurization, now at 5.18 pounds per square inch of pressure inside the crew lock. What is the next action going to be for you? We have about 10 to go. I copy for next standing by. Woody, deep breath pump, man ISO valve closed. Both of you can expect an alert tone. Closed. And copy closed. Okay, next thing we're going to do is a leak check. So you'll both take your switch display status until leak check question mark is displayed. Hold that for two seconds and then follow the displayed instructions. In order, QV1. QV2 in work. And pressure inside the crew lock is now at five pounds per square inch of pressure. So you did hear those words about the systems check that are occurring now. Following the systems check, depressurization will resume and continue all the way down to vacuum. And once vacuum is reached, the two spacewalkers will complete some additional suit and communication checks before they place their spacesuit on internal battery power, officially marking the start of today's spacewalk. And following this, the crew will, of course, exit the airlock and begin working to get that IROSA installed. Check complete, EV-1, moving to EVA. That'll be a minute. Same for EV-2. Copy, good. We check for both. Good news. And then correct, you both want your post rash raters to EVA. So let me know when that's complete. EV-2's in EVA. EV-1's in EVA. The O2 actuator EVA for both. Woody and Steve, nice job. Woody, you're going to take the deep press pump man ISO valve to open. Both of you can expect an alert tone. Copy. Press pump man ISO valve is open.
Okay, emergency MPEV is also open. Both of you continue to monitor your suit pressure gauge. Make sure that it remains less than 5.5. .5. Again, if it ever goes above 5.5, .5, let us know and we'll stop the defrost. Did you want to call? Did you call? Woody, the next action will be at 2 PSI. Copy, I see it. And those system checks looking good. Depressurization is continuing as expected. Pressure inside the crew lock now less than four pounds per square inch of pressure. Pressure inside the crew lock now approaching three pounds per square inch of pressure. And we are getting a view back inside of the equipment lock here where NASA astronaut Frank Rubio on the left and United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi continue to step through depressurization procedures with Hoberg and Bowen who are inside the crew lock. Pressure inside the crew lock now at 2.68 pounds per square inch of pressure. Once vacuum is reached inside the crew lock, the two spacewalkers will complete additional suit and communication checks before they do place their spacesuit on internal battery power, which will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. A U.S. spacewalk start and end time is measured from the time the crew places their spacesuit on internal battery power. And we're at 123, continuing to 103. Copy, thank you. Now closing in on two pounds per square inch of pressure inside the International Space Station's crew lock. Okay, what do you want? 103, deep press pump, man, ISO valve, closed? Closed. I'll be closed. Woody on the UIA, switch deep press pump power off, OFF. Deep press pump power is off. Okay, guys, I will turn you over to Jenny for your initial tether config. And Jenny, you are prime. Copy, I'm prime, ready for the config. Great, Jenny, I'm in a great, con uh, great position to read you the config setting at the airlock.
Lock the ring extender. Go. All right. Air lock the ring extender, I have my left waist tether. Gate closed, locked, black on black. The waist tether small hook is on my left ear ring extender. Gate closed, locked, black on black. Also on my left ear ring extender, I have my red hook. Gate closed, locked, black on black. My red reel and green reels are both unlocked. The red reel's yellow hook is gate closed, locked, black on black to my green reel. Green reels, small green hook is gate closed locked on my red reel. And the green reels anchor hook goes to Steve's right weight tether. Okay, so and that anchor hook and Steve's weight tether large hook are both gate closed locked black on black. Steve, over to you if you can see it. Yep. We pick up with my waist tether, which is a gate close side lock big hook that you take uh, together, red hook, gate close side lock on my right D wing extender. Yellow hook is gate close side lock to the green rail, both reels are unlocked. I have the uh, blank hook to my mini workstation. On my left hand side, I have I copy all. We are in a good config. Thanks so much, Jams, and good morning to you and the Orbit 2 team. Good morning. We are happy to be here. Excited to work with all of you. And you are now hearing the voice of Jenny Gibbons, who is the ground IV. She'll be stepping through procedures with the crew during today's spacewalk. And that pressure inside the crew lock now at vacuum. Woody and Steve, we're continuing the deep press here. It'll take a couple of more minutes uh, when the crew lock DPDT is approximately zero. Expect an alert tone. Zero copies. DB2 copies. That pressure inside the crew lock is continuing to approach vacuum. It's now at 0.97 pounds per square inch. You guys, uh, caution, good luck out there. It's going to be fun to watch you guys do this. Frank, we're uh, depending on you. This is going to be good. You guys are going to work on this. It's going to work out really well. Frank, thanks so much. You guys did a fantastic job by being this morning. Thanks so much for everything. My pleasure. We'll see you in a few hours. Everything continuing to go smoothly this morning as NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen tracking around eight or nine more minutes down to 0.5 PSI. Okay, that's 
sense watching it go very slowly. <laughs> Sounds good. Again, everything going smoothly so far this morning as we anticipate the spacesuits to be switched over to battery power here shortly as soon as those comm checks and system checks are completed. Following this, the crew will egress or exit the, the hatch after they open the thermal cover. And we are continuing to get views inside the International Space Station. You are seeing NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, who helped get Bowen and Hoberg suited up and ready to go this morning. Al Nayadi now floating into screen as well. Bowen and Hoberg are inside the crew lock, which continues to depress. Now at 0.64 pounds per square inch, rapidly approaching vacuum. The goal of today's spacewalk is to install an upgraded IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array on the 1A power channel on the starboard truss of the space station. Today's IROSA installation will be the fifth installed on the space station. Pressure inside the crew lock now at 0.55 pounds per square inch of pressure. And pressure inside the crew lock now at 0.5 pounds per square inch of pressure. Stephen Woody, 
we are at 0.5 PSI, you are go to verify the EV hatch gauge is less than 0.6 PSI and open the EV hatch. Press EV, EV hatch at 0 decimal 4. Copy, 0 decimal 4, you go. All right, get ready to open the hatch. And we are hearing that the hatch is open. Pressure inside the crew lock now at vacuum. Both Hoberg and Bowen are now going to work together to egress or exit the airlock. Copy, Frank, emergency MPEV closed. Now we are in post depress. Woody and Steve, on your DCMs, switch power to bat, stagger your switch throws, and expect a warning tone. If you want power, power to battery. Copy. EV2, go to battery. If you want, could be start blank, go bike. EV2, good restart, blank, no bite. Copy. We verified you have a functional display. Switch power EV1 and 2 to off, OFF on the UIA. All right, UIA, power EV1 and 2, both off. Copy. Check power EV1 and 2 LEDs. All four are off OSF. Four LEDs off. Copy off. Switch display to pro to verify functional display. We'll have switch display functional. EV2 display functional. Copy two functional displays. You can disconnect your SCUs. Install your DCM covers and stow the SCUs in their pouches. Give you one in work. Give you two in work. All right, EB1, that's correction EB2, e, as you in the pouch. Yep, I, the one still in the pouch. Copy EB1 and EB2, as the user in the pouches. On the check, depress pump many, 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 pump
set to four. And EV2 also at four. Copy, both TCVs set to four. Report suit pressure gauge. Two, EV1, four decimal two. EV2, four decimal four. Copy, four decimal two and four decimal four. Set your visors as required. We have around 10 minutes till sunrise. One copy, two copies. All right, with that, Steve, you can open the thermal cover. We'll have you stow the hook on the stiffener tether point, cinch the strap, and report Sharpie lines visible. All right, so you get my tethers back to where they belong. They're bouncing around a bit. And we are expecting the thermal hatch cover to open momentarily. Okay, hook is released. Connected and And we are seeing that thermal cover begin to open. Steve is preparing to egress. You can retrieve crew lock bag M. You'll be throwing this on your BRT and handing crew lock bag T out to Steve. All right, Johnny, sounds great. All right, I've got the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six lines visible. Happy Steve, that's a good config. Egress the airlock. And we are seeing NASA astronaut Steve Bowen egress the airlock. He's designated EV-1 today, and he'll be wearing that spacesuit with the red stripe, so he's the first out of the airlock. Need no rush at all, but I've got crew lock back to you when you're ready. Okay. Give you a second. Bowen is still inside the airlock. He'll egress here shortly, but first he's going to hand a crew lock crew lock bag to Steve. My BRT ready? Sounds good. Sounds great, Steve, awaiting your go to egress. All right, trying to get my other's coil strike. All right, and you have a go to egress. Copy, go to egress, thanks. After egress, you can both turn on your HECAs and perform body checks. Hey, Johnny, thanks. And next out of the airlock is going to be NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, who is completing his very first spacewalk this morning. 
He'll be wearing the spacesuit with no stripes on it, the unmarked spacesuit, and his designation is EV-2. Once both crew members are out of the airlock, they'll work to translate to their next location, but first they're going to turn the lights on on their helmet cameras. Both crew members now out of the airlock. Houston's ready to copy buddy checks. Confirm your HECAs are on. And I see, what are you doing this way? I see green light. Where's the other one? Uh, your in the TV is off. Is it? Okay. Goodbye. Um, two separate handles down. My crew lock bag on. Yep. We'll just... All right, Steve. Ready when you are. All right, let me see. One thing left to check. Are your lights pretty bright? Um, your in your TV still is not on yet. Hey, Andre, hit the button. Oh, there it is. I see yeah. it now. Okay. Okay. And, uh, I see all safer handles down. I see two tabs up. And I see two green lights. And I see your lights are up. All right, Steve, for you, I see two mini workstation tabs and a BRT tab, all three up. I see a green WVS light and a green HECA light. Your lights are on. You got tools and tethers. Put your bag on the BRT. And you're looking good, Steve. All right. I am. And I uh, love you to check your secret handles. One, two, both down. Looking Thank good. you. I'm starting off. My gloves look good, and I have a dry hat. And my gloves are secured, and I have dry hat as well. Houston copies, good buddy checks, good uh, glove checks, and dry hats for both of you. You can tend the thermal cover closed, and Steve, you'll be translating to the anchor hook location. I have more words for you when you're on your way. All right, give me one second. Cover closed, and then I'll be on my way. I got the cover, Steve. All right. Yeah. And Jenny, I'll have to... Uh, Hold on fully closing the cover for my waist tether. Copy. Just tend to close for now. Thanks, Woody. And Bowen and Hoberg completed some initial checks to, to ensure everything is looking good on their suits. They're now going to get that thermal hatch cover closed.
Steve, I have a caution for you. Avoid contact with the deployed test cable. Okay. I'm saying avoid contact with the test cable. Good read back for you both for around two minutes to sunrise. Okay. What's my mile marker, by the way? You're looking for the FHRC, so F1 FHRC. And Hoberg is getting the thermal cover closed. Meanwhile, Bowen is translating up the forward face of the truss. Steve, that mile marker is 6300. 6300, thank you. Once the thermal cover is closed, Hoberg is going to follow a similar translation path, but he's going to stop at the port crew equipment translation aid cart, and he's going to pick up an articulating portable foot restraint. This is going to be required for him later in the spacewalk when he steps into it on the Canada Arm 2. This is where you'll place your anchor hook. It's the nadir most handrail under the FHRC. We're looking for the nadir stanchion. All right, nadir stanchion. I blind to a close slide walk through the green rail, which is unlocked. The yellow hook is locked, a close slide walk. The red rail is unlocked. To my right, the ring extender. Just get close while you walk. Uh, and the green hook between the green and red, red heels is get close while you walk. Copy. That's a good config, Steve. We need Woody's anchor hook on handrail 3247, which is the Zenith handrail, just above yours. Okay. That didn't work. Okay, what do you close, fire lock, if he's coming back to the airlock. Tabby, that is a good load pass for Woody. You can give Woody the go to release his waist tether. Would you have a go to release your waist tether? Steve, I copy, picking it up. Steve, you can now translate to the FSE worksite. You'll be dropping your green hook on S3, handrail 3011, which is nadir of the port seat of cart. 33011, not that narrow. Copy. Steve, or Woody, excuse me, once that's complete, you can close the thermal cover. Uh, you broke up the jam space, uh, close thermal cover. Copy, Woody. Once that's complete, you can translate. You are headed to the crew lock bag stowage location on the port seat of cart. Hey, Jenny, I copy. Thanks. Steve, when ready, I have cautions and a warning for you. Okay, goodbye. All right, we're doing awesome. Warning, grapple shafts and curvet coupling are no touch. And cautions, no aggressive movements or quick grabs on the FSE. Translate slowly. Wait for motion to dampen out before imparting loads. And do not contact the IROSA blankets. All right, I understand and copy all. And with the thermal cover closed, 
Hoberg is now working to translate to the flight support equipment work site. This is essentially a pallet that is currently holding the IROSAs. Green wheel and summons the 3011. Green hook, I should say. I copy your green hook on handrail 3011. 3011. Okay. Following this, Steve, you'll be translating onto the FSE via the POA. And the crew is running about 10 minutes ahead of today's timeline. Today's spacewalk is unique in that once the International Space Station rollout array or IROSA is installed, cables will need to be mated during an eclipse portion. So this spacewalk is very carefully chore choreographed to ensure that this timing takes place as necessary. And you are seeing this view from the helmet cam of NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, who is completing his first spacewalk today. He's continuing to translate or move, make his way over to the pallet where the IROSAs are installed. M on port Theta cart Nader handrail. He's currently at the port CETA cart where he's going to temporarily drop off one of his crew lock bags. And he's also going to pick up an APFR, an articulating portable foot restraint, which will allow him to step into and ride on the Canada Arm 2. Hoberg will be carrying the IROSA while he's on the Canada Arm 2 in order to move it over to be installed. Today's solar array will be installed on the 1A power channel on the starboard truss of the International Space Station. Thirty seconds to a short handover. And we are in a brief expected handover between satellites, but we'll regain communications and video with the crew during their spacewalk here momentarily. Steve, Woody, I'm back with you after the handover. Can I see that small bushing on the uh, OR Rosa? I'm passing it. Copy, you have eyes on the FOD. Thanks, Steve.
equity, you will be picking up the APFR. In WIS 3, looks like you're already there. Should have an ingress aid. And it does. And this view from NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg's helmet camera as he works to pick up the articulating portable foot restraint from the port seat of cart. Benny, just reporting the locking paddles on this APFR is very sticky. Copy, sticky locking paddles. Woody. Working on it. Uh, the paddles. Copy the paddles. Woody, this is in line with what we expect for this APFR. Copy a TCV of two for Woody. Negative seven. Copy seven. Just uh, confirming that the adjustable large small goes to 0008, and the integral goes to the upper handrail. A firm, that's right, uh, Steve. That handrail should be 13. Once that's done, I'll take a glove inspection half check. And while Hoberg works to secure that articulating portable foot restraint after grabbing it from the port seat of cart, we are going to hear Bowen complete a glove and hap check. You're headed to the inboard ingress location. The hap is the helmet absorption pad. And this is checked regularly throughout the spacewalk along with the gloves just to assure that everything is performing as expected. With the articulating portable foot restraint now in hand, Hoberg is going to work to install it on the Canada Arm 2. All right, I've got the integral on 0013 and the large small adjustable on 008. Copy. Push that up a little bit. Woody, I have your next step, right. working with Frank to GCA to the published APFR install position. All right, James, I agree. Uh, Steve, do you need the comm? Just for one second, I'm going to head over to R5 on the upper. And I see it. And what am I setting there, Jenny, if I'm going to lose talk? And Steve, can you confirm that you've picked up the PGT? I left the ret on the bag, so that's now on your swing arm, and I need a glove inspection hat check. Okay, do the glove inspection hat check first. And you. We were getting a view there briefly of the IROSAs. There we see it again here, the International Space Station rollout arrays. There's two on that pallet on the very left of your screen. One of them is going to be installed today, and the other will be installed on. June 15th. Right. Get the wire 
We're also getting a view of the Canada Arm 2, which Hoberg will be utilizing today when he moves the IROSA to the 1A power channel. All right, Jenny, I have the PGT, and we'll leave this rat on here, correct? A firm, leave the rat on your swing, or leave the rat on the bag, and rat swap to the swing arm rat. All right, that's going to work. If you give me the PGT settings, we can give the column to three. Bravo two, counter two. Bravo two, counter two. All right, I'll let you know if we get contact before I've done, if I haven't done it yet. Copy, and that was a good readback. I am Jared Woody, you may have the call. Copy, thanks. And also in your frame, there you can see a Dragon vehicle that actually brought up the ISS rollout solar arrays. That Dragon docked to the International Space Station on Monday. Following the docking, the ISS rollout solar arrays were removed from Dragon's trunk and placed on that pallet that you just saw there. And next, our spacewalkers are going to work to remove that first IROSA solar array by um, removing some bolts and working through some procedures to loosen it up before it can be hand carried by Hoberg on the robotic arm. Time to go. Continue. Copy, continue. Ready to go. Continue to publish. Ten to go, continue to publish. Ramping out. Okay, we did that is our uh, published position. How is it how is that looking? All right, Fulton, can you please give me five zero centimeters station mater? Copy with the uh, half a meter station meter in work. Thank you. I see good motion. Copy, good motion. Thirty centimeters ago. Continue. Continuing. Ramping out. So we did that is half a meter station meter. Copy, Fulton. That is uh, GCA complete. That's a perfect position. All right, copy GCA complete, and brakes are coming on. Copy, brakes on. Bravo. And I'll be installing the APFR. Woody, we're looking That's for. That's You are go to install the APFR. Woody, we're looking for a clocking of 12. Copy, clocking 12, and I already confirmed Papa, Papa, Fox 6, set. Good settings. Steve, I'm back with you. Thanks, Jim. I'm at five turns, five or two, counterclockwise two, and bolt are releasing R5. Copy, the bolt will spring out when fully released, and you'll see a white line indicator. Expect 18 to 20 turns. Hoberg continuing to step through procedures to get that articulating portable foot restraint installed on the Canada Arm 2. This articulating portable foot restraint, or APFR, allows him to click his spacewalking boots into it so that he can ride aboard the Canada Arm 2. He'll be carrying the IROSA while he does so.
The APFR is installed in the arm. Blocking at 12, pop up, pop up, Fox 6. Always block on black, good pull, twist test, and the pitch knob can be depressed. Tuppy Woody, good checks. Now we'll need you to perform a safety tether swap to the arm. Let me know when your yellow hook is on the SSRMS tether point, and I'll take your checks. All right, sounds good, Jimmy. All right, that bolt is released. I got 27 turns. I let it do a couple of bumps. So that it would verify that it was clear. Copy, 27 turns and the bolt is fully released. Can you see a white line indicator? And there's a white line indicator. Copy, you can stow your PGT. And we are currently in an expected handover between our satellites. We do have communications with the crew, however, we do not have video at this moment, but we'll regain it. Copy. Translate to Stanchion Bravo. Hoberg has completed installing the APFR on the robotic arm. Jenny, my yellow hook. Is gate closed, locked, black on black for the SSRMS tether point. Green hook is stowed on mile marker 6360, and that green reel is unlocked. Copy, Woody, that is a good config. Insert, ensure that uh, Steve's tether is clear of your green hook, and then you can work with Frank to get to the ingress position. Let me get eyes on Steve's tether. It's well clear. I am in a great config for APFR ingress. OGCA needed. Okay, Woody, we are copy, and the uh, brakes are still on. You are go for APFR ingress. Copy, brakes on, go for ingress. Thank you, so on. Woody, you need to attach a waste tether to the ingress aid. Travel. In work jams, thanks. And Steve, say, say again if I miss a call from you. I'm expecting Bravo. And Hoberg has successfully gotten that articulating portable foot restraint installed on the Canada Arm 2. He's now going to work to click his boots into the articulating portable foot restraint and ingress it. This will allow him to fly on the Canada Arm 2. And you are seeing him work to ingress that APFR on your screen right there. Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2, go to R5, and looking for a full release and a white indicator. Good word, Steve. Expect 18 to 20 turns I have written here. All right, 18 to 20 turns. Okay. And Steve, I'm going to look for the con again when you have a chance. Hey, we'll Thanks. It's Hassan, I'm ready for trust back off. All right, copy, uh, Woody, you are uh, ready, and brakes are coming off. Copy, brakes off. Woody, ensure your, check your tools and tethers are clear. We need you to confirm that. Thanks, Jams. Yep, tools and tethers are all clear. Copy, I agree. You are a go to proceed. Woody, we also are hearing that your left safer handle might be up. We need you to check both of them. Got it. You, your team was correct. And both safer handles are down. 
Copy both safer handles down on Woody. Thank you. You guys are doing great on time. So, Woody, Woody, when you are, we're going to bring you first station forward about um, 80 centimeters and then um, station later, uh, 3 meters and 60 centimeters. Claude, I'm ready for all of that. Here we go. Then uh, starting motion, station forward. Good motion, full time. Copy, good motion. And as you can see on your screen now, Hoburg now being moved while in that articulating portable foot restraint on the Canada arm. That Canada arm is being operated by United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi, who is inside the International Space Station. Hopeberg is going to be translated to a better position to help NASA astronaut Steve Bowen remove some bolts and an anti-rotation device which will enable the IROSA to be released from the pallet. Following this, Hoberg will hand carry it while on the Canada Arm 2 over to the 1A worksite. Okay, two meters to go. Continue. One meter to go. And this view from NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg's helmet cam as he is on the Canada Arm 2. Looks like he's taking this opportunity to get some truly out of this world photography. And ramping out. That looks good for fun. Hey Woody, just heads up, next uh, we're going to take you to the vault axis, join our cast, and that'll be uh, two minutes and a half. I'm ready for that. Okay, thanks so far. Okay, Kenny, I've got Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2, set up. Uh, there were 20 turns. Uh, the lower Arosa uh, with a good white band. Copy, I release. I uh, understand R5 on the lower Rosa is released with 20 turns. Um, you should be pretty much at the bolts for C2. We are going to work on releasing these anti-rotation devices. So you can attach an adjustable equipment tether and from your small trash bag to the ARD tether point. Okay, let me get that done. You are ready when you are for the journal cast. I'm ready for conference. Then uh, start the motion. Copy. And Hoberg continuing to be moved on the Canada Arm 2. Meanwhile, Bowen is working with the Pistol Grip Tool, or PGT, to release bolts. This is a restraint bolt. Next up, he's going to work on releasing the anti-rotation devices. 
All of this is all of this is in preparation for ultimately removing the International Space Station rollout solar array from this carrier, this pallet that it is temporarily stowed on. And as Hoberg continues to make his way over to his first work site, the International Space Station is currently flying 258 statute miles off the coast of Nova Scotia over the North Atlantic Ocean. Woody, we need you to repower your HECA. Oh, actually, Jenny, I just pressed the power button and I see a green light, so it should be on now. Yes, we just needed you to power it on. That's correct. It was knocked off earlier. Okay, copy. Getting a really great view here of Woody Hoberg in the articulating portable foot restraint. Two. Good read back. Yes, 10 turns only. A reminder, these are not captive, so we only want to release 10 turns. 10 turns only. And in Hoberg's hand, you can see the PGT, or pistol grip tool. This is essentially the space drill. It's going to be utilized a lot throughout today's spacewalk, first to remove the IROSA from the pallet and then to reinstall it on the 1A power channel. Copy. Thanks, Jams. Good reminder. I have Alpha 4 counter 2 set for R1 and R2. Those are good settings, Woody. It doesn't matter to us which of these bolts you do first, but the bolts will spring out when it's fully released. You have the same settings for both of them. Copy, thank you. All right, I get 8.8 .8 turns. Happy, that was eight turns. Steve, and you can remove the ARD, and then we'll be torquing back this bolt. All right, pulling the ARD off. So far, I'm ready for MR3. Okay, Woody, uh, we uh, need a few minutes, a few seconds to set up our values here. Take your time. Happy the ARD is removed. Happy ARD removed. Your settings are Bravo 1, clockwise 2, and you'll be driving this stop block bolt to torque. Bravo one clockwise two. That's it. Good settings. Bravo. One clockwise. Hey, we ready for uh, the next motion. So it's going to be body and uh, meter and sexy uh, centimeters. Oh, that sounds great. You go for that motion. Copy. Go and start the motion. Then. We are 48 minutes into today's spacewalk, and NASA astronaut Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg are continuing to work together to remove bolts from the International Space Station rollout solar array in order to release it so that it can be carried on the Canada Arm 2. To step through the next set of procedures is
I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Anna Schneider, who's going to step through the next set of procedures with you. That's all right. Yeah. Okay, one minute to go with you. Continue. Yeah. All right, Steve, I copy 11 foot pounds and a green light. Could you say turn count again? Turn count was 45. Half a meter to go. Continue. Got to continue. We're just checking on those turns, Steve. The bumper rolled on top of the uh, mount. You might not get as many turns as you might have expected. Okay, so it's stop motion. But you can look at it. It's, it's on the nice and snug. The, uh, we are in the public position and you are go for a ball thing. Three words on there, Copy it's not turning, it's on the boat, it's on the amount, it didn't go past the amount. See it? Now you can see NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg beginning to release the R bolts. All right, Steve, I'm sorry, one more time. We're going to have to have you say what you saw on those turns and whether you counted the turns or you're reading them off. Well, I counted the turns correctly. Bumper, the lock, but it turned, it went onto the mount for the bolt expansion. Therefore, it is locked in place. You can still see treads below the uh, bumper, and the uh, C2 bolt is clear. All right, thanks for the clarification again, Steve. This is a good bolt. You can stir your PGT and we'll have you translate to Stanchion Charlie for the Charlie 1 ARD. Okay, and we Charlie for... The bolts that Hoberg is working on um, are on the boom end of the upper IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array. The first two bolts will allow the boom deployment system rollers to be moved into place to help with the array deployment later in the spacewalk. Rotating the deployment system. Bolt sprung out and it was 9.5 on R2. That'd be 9.5, that is a good bolt release, Woody. Uh, we need you to access R3 and R4 next. You can GCA if you need to. Um, I have new settings for you, and as a reminder, these will be the 245 turn bolts, so we need you in a good body position. You just heard confirmation that Woody Ho Hoberg successfully released two of the bolts, and he's moving on to the second set. And Woody, we are ready. Okay, so it's on half a meter station, uh, correction, half a meter body down. You copy, half a meter body down. Okay, starting motion. Copy. Good motion. Copy, good motion. You're hearing some conversation between NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and UAE astronaut Sultan al Niyadi, who is inside the space station operating the robotic arm as he moves Woody Hoberg down a little bit to access the next set of bolts. Okay, you can wrap out. Stopping out. Option stop. GCA complete. Copy, GCA complete. Steve, once in position, you can tether to the ARD tether point, and then I have settings for you for the stop block bolt. Complete. And I'm ready for settings. Bravo three, counter two, 10 turns only. Bravo three, counter two. And Jenny, I have alpha three, clockwise three for R3. Copy alpha three for clockwise three. Verify, verify your PGT turn count is zero. Firm, it's zero. 
copy, PGT turn count is zero, you can release R3. Copy. Starting turn. Copy, Woody. The second set of bolts that Woody Hoberg is currently working on will release two of four mechanisms that hold the ISS rollout solar array in its rolled up configuration. When folded, the IROSA measures approximately 10 feet by 2 feet by 4 feet. Got eight turns. And it's loose for the ARD. Copy eight turns on the ARD. You or on the stop block bolt, you can remove the ARD. Yep. Remove the ARD is removed. Ready for settings to drive back in. Bravo one, clockwise two. Bravo one, clockwise two. Thirty seconds from short handover. While NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg continues to work on those bolts, NASA astronaut Steve Bowen continues to work on the anti-rotation device. Copy, Steve. You've driven the stop block bolt, 12.1 torque, seven turns, and a green light. Steve, I'm back with you after the handover, 12.1 torque, seven turns, and a green light. You can stow the ARDs in the crew lock bag. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen has released both of the ARDs or anti-rotation devices and will begin stowing them in his crew lock bag. Here on the screen, we continue to see NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg work on releasing the second set of bolts on the boom end of the upper IROSA. Going in. And I think I pull out the, uh, cool, the, uh, topic daddy. A firm, Steve, those are good, good words. We need the 5 8 12 inch wobble on your PGT and you can stow the 7 16 on the socket caddy. All right, and I'll put that in work. JRD is nicely stuffed in here. Copy with. Jenny, 245 turns, R3, turkey timer popped out. Copy, 245 turns on R3 with the turkey timer popped out. Your settings are alpha three, counter three for R4. 
Alpha 3, counter 3, thank zero. Turn on the PGT. Here you go. Starting turn. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is currently working on the last of the four bolts. These last two bolts release two of four mechanisms that hold the IROSA or ISS rollout solar array in its rolled up configuration. I copy a good pull test on the 716 12-inch on the socket caddy. That's correct. All right, good pull test on the 12-inch 5 inch wobble on my PGP. All right, and good pull test on the 5 8 inch 12-inch on your PGP. Steve, now we will be breaking torque on the IROSA FSE bolt. You can translate to bolt Charlie 1, which is Stanchion Charlie, should be right next to you. Charlie 1, right next to me. We'll be breaking torque on this bolt, less than half a turn. Your settings are Bravo 3, counter 2. Your settings are Bravo 3, counter 2. Good word. And now I get myself in a good position. Good words. Less than half a turn, correct? A firm. And big picture for all crew, we are about a minute and a half from an LOS. We have voice calm for the first five minutes. And for the last five minutes, I'm still prime IV. I will hand over to Frank when I need to. And Jenny, do you want copies that I had 0.54 turns from C1? Copy. Torque broken Jenny, on C1. You can translate to C2. I copied uh, R4 release 245 turn, turkey timer out. Copy Woody, great job. R4 release 245 turns, and you see the turkey timer. You can work with Frank to move to the carrier back off. You can work with Frank to move to the carrier back off. 
You just heard confirmation that NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg finished releasing the fourth bolt. That bolt was holding the IROSA in its rolled up configuration. And uh, this is basically when you body out one meter sixty centimeters, and that is station forward. You also heard them reference something called a turkey timer. Um, that is basically just a status indicator to ensure that the bolts are fully released. We are now in a, an expected handover that will last about fifteen minutes. We are currently about one hour and five minutes into today's spacewalk. It began at 825 Central Time this morning, 925 AM Eastern Time, when the spacesuit switched to battery power. Steve Bowen, who is EV-1 with the red stripes, egressed the crew lock and received a crew lock bag. And then EV-2, who is Woody Hoberg, followed him shortly after. Bowen then translated up the forward face of the trust and went starboard, config configuring his safety tethers on the way, and then Hoberg followed a similar path, but went to the port crew equipment translation aid, or CETA cart, to temporarily stow his bag and retrieve the articulating portable foot restraint. Bowen then translated to the IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar ray carrier, stowed his bag, and retrieved the pistol grip tool. Bowen began preparing the IROSA for removal from the carrier, first releasing a restraint bolt on the upper IROSA. Meanwhile, Woody Hoberg relocated the foot restraint and installed it on the space station's robotic arm. From there, Woody Hoberg ingressed the foot restraint and then that the arm moved him away from the trust and towards the work site. Bowen translated to the lower IROSA and released its first restraint bolt and then released both anti-rotation devices on the upper IROSA and stowed them in the crew lock bag. While on the robotic arm, Woody Hoberg was flown over to access two different sets of bolts on the boom end of the upper IROSA. The first two bolts allowed the boom deployment system rollers to be moved into place to help with the array deployment later in the spacewalk. And then the second two bolts released two of four mechanisms that hold the IROSA in its rolled up configuration.
The goal of today's spacewalk is to install an IROSA, or International Space Station Rollout Solar Array, to augment power generation for the 1A power channel on the space station's starboard truss. The new solar arrays measure 60 feet long by 20 feet wide once they're deployed and shade a little more than half of the original solar arrays, which are 112 feet long by 39 feet wide. Each new IROSA produces more than 20 kilowatts of electricity and once installed will enable a 30% increase in power production over the station's current arrays. There's about six minutes left in this 15-minute loss of signal before we'll return to seeing Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg working on today's spacewalk. Once we're back, we'll see uh, Steve Bowen working on releasing the upper IROSA restraint bolt and installing the first two handling aids called scoops in preparation for removing the IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array from the carrier. Currently aboard the International Space Station, we have the Expedition 69 crew, which includes NASA astronauts Frank Rubio, who is inside the space station helping with today's spacewalk. Um, also inside the space station is UAE astronaut Sultan al and Roscosmos cosmonauts Sergei Prokopyov and Dmitry Patelin.
And then, of course, our spacewalkers today are NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg. Here in the room, we have flight director Diane Daly at the helm, and she goes by the call sign Horizon Flight. And then serving as the prime ground IV, we have Ginny Gibbons. There's about one minute left in this loss of signal, and then we'll quickly return to seeing what Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen are progressing. Today's spacewalk is the 264th spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly, Maintenance, and Upgrades, and the seventh spacewalk out of the space station for this year.
Todd, I'm ready to So during that loss of signal, um, Steve Bowen released the upper IROSA restraint bolt and installed the first two handling aids called scoops in preparation for removing the IROSA from the carrier. Clear, continue. You can now hear some discussion between NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, who is on the Canada Arm Robotic 2, um, and UAE astronaut Sultan Al Niadi, who is inside the space station uh, maneuvering the arm. Was that looking, uh, Woody, do you want uh, any further GCA? Yep, that's that thing. Stand by. Um, could I please go body down about 20 centimeters? They are flying Woody Hoberg to the hinge end of the upper IROSA. Once there, both uh, Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen will work to remove the final bolt holding it to the carrier. And then Steve Bowen will install a second scoop, and Woody Hoberg will then lift it off of the carrier. And still talking about the great spot. GCA complete. Okay, GCA complete, and that was uh, 15 centimeters body down. Perfect. We copy GCA complete. Woody, attach a ret to the scoop, which is on IROSA. Hey, James, I have a ret on the scoop on IROSA, left, left side. Copy. Uh, warning for both of you. With okay, Jenny, I have... Steve, go. <laughs> I have the first scoop. Um, I've been to work station. This is a long duration tie down center. Uh, do I need to bring the rat with that or do I leave the rat transfer to Woody's rat? That'd be adjustable as well. You can leave the rat. You'll stow it on your mini workstation and uh, Woody will use a rat from his mini workstation in order to tether to it. Okay, so. We can get ahead on our checks here. Uh, so a warning for both of you, do not release C1 until I give you the go. I'll take a glove inspection and half check from Woody. There's no change to the gloves. Half is dry. I can also report uh, visor down, glove heaters on, TCV step. Reference. Copy. Good glove inspection and half check. Cooling visor glove heaters are set. Check gauntlets down. They're both down. Check tools and tethers are clear, and your ingress aid is clear. Tools, tethers, and ingress aid all clear. Check heels secure in the APFR. Yeah, and James, did you guys happen to get eyes on my heels just for positive confirmation there? Or can Steve see them? Checking. Woody, we do not have eyes on your feet, but Steve could potentially That's check if you me. need. Hold on, I was going to take a bit of a here. Okay, I'm feeling quite confident, so I'm, I think you look pretty good, Woody. Fix the rim. Yeah, I agree. All right, heels are secure, James. Thanks. Copy, Woody. Those are good checks. We will pause here. And uh, Benny, when I transfer, I am not transferring the adjustable to Woody, just the scoop and the long duration tie down. Rather, I keep the adjustable with me to pick them up later, correct? Copy. 
Checking, Steve. I think it's just a scoop and a long duration. I do too, but I want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, that's right, Steve. So yeah, there's the... no requirement to take the adjustable with you. You can have it if you want, but we just need the scoop and the long duration tie down tether bundled together and the red swap to Woody's mini workstation. Okay. Understand. And Woody, if you have a red, I don't know if you I sure do. Here's a red. I don't know if you can reach me. Oh, yeah, you can send that over here. Okay. I've got several things on there right now, so. Okay. See it? So, goal is to get this rat on the scoop? Yeah. Okay, it is on, so it's scoop. Okay, the you can reduce the that adjustable then. You got it. Very Keep long duration. Is coming back. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. All right, let me get that clipped on here. Now right. we'll get set up. Copy. We have a couple of additional checks here as well. We need a glove inspection and hat check from Steve and a buddy check of each other's helmets for signs of water. Yeah, Steve, your helmet. Actually, stay right there, Steve. Okay, I have a good view into Steve's helmet. Uh, I can see his hat and his hat uh, absorption band, and I see no signs of water. I agree. Copy. Steve, I'll flip my visor up for you. And I see no signs of water. I see your helmet absorption bad. And I have no indication of water. Looks good. Great. And my gloves are the same. They're still good, and my hat is dry. Copy. We have good checks. And as a reminder, Woody, we track you holding that scoop at this time. It needs to be readied to you, but Steve needs to be holding it. He will be the one installing it after C1 release. Yep, concur. All right, let me go to the guitar hole for it area. Thank you. Yep. We are now about one hour and 27 minutes into today's spacewalk before Woody Hoberg and okay, Steve Bowen remove the final bolt holding the IROSA to the carrier. They're performing a series of glove and hap checks. Uh, you are both doing great on time. We are an hour up. All right, copy that. All right, great, Jan, thanks. All right, next as written, I have uh, Steve releasing Charlie 1 fully. Woody, you are going to maintain control of IROSA as he releases that bolt and installs the scoop. Okay, Jan, sounds good. I've got IROSA. Hey, I need settings. Bravo 3, counter 3, fully release C1. The bolt will spring out. Expect 26 turns. Bravo 3. Counterclockwise three, and about 26 turns, and bolts should spring out. Right, that's starting right now. Good words. You just heard the ground IV here in the room, Jenny Gibbons, um, to speak with the NASA astronauts outside the space station, Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen. They were given the go to release the IROSA. So both crew members are now working to remove the final bolt holding the IROSA to the carrier. Bowen will then install a second scoop while uh, Hoberg lifts the IROSA off of its carrier. All right. We've got uh, two seven turns to come off. I think I need to turn a few more, but not three of this bolt. Copy, 27 turns so going for more. Turns. Now that seems very loose. Again, initial turns. Does it feel weak? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it feels, yeah, quite loose. Okay. Just go my PGT and get those scoop in place. Great. Good words. 